Hello friends, welcome back to Go Agile 6. So last time we started Kanban, we looked at the birth of Kanban and how it got adopted at Toyota production system. So today we will look at how Kanban found its way into IT and how it became one of the popular Agile frameworks. So over time, the Toyota production system gained a lot of popularity globally and so project managers all over the world started trying it in different flavors. But the biggest breakthrough came in software industry. So from 2001 onwards, there were active discussions around Agile, Agile Manifesto and so on, which we reviewed in the previous uh, episodes, right? So around 2005, one gentleman by name David Anderson took Toichi Ono's production system and started applying it in the IT process and came up with Kanban for IT. Predominantly, he called it the pull process. He came up with six principles for Kanban in IT. Visual workflow, limit work in progress, managing the flow, make the process pulses explicit, implement feedback loops, and improve collaboratively. If you observe carefully, few things are becoming prominent in the system. Those are batch size, flow, queue, work in progress. Now let's try to understand these principles with some examples. There are two burger shops here. One is a ready to go burger shop and the other is a custom burger shop. In the ready to go shop, what they're doing is based on historic analysis, they figured a particular type of burger is most popular. Hey, these are just some examples, okay, to help you understand the underlying concept. So don't get into debates that uh, there are McDonald's sells so many types of burgers or Burger King sells uh, uh, so many different types of burgers and so on. We are not building a case study on burgers here. We are just evaluating some examples to understand the Kanban concepts. Okay, coming back. In the ready to go shop, they studied that certain types of burgers are popular and also analyzed that they get lots of people at certain time. Let's say 12 to 1 p.m. So what they do is they will create a number of those burgers and keep them ready just in time by 12. So people walk in, pick a burger, pay and go. So it's very efficient and faster. So they know, so they know in the 12 noon batch, let me make 50 burgers. In 1 p.m. batch, let me make 30 burgers. So the batch size is very crucial here. That determines overall delays, efficiencies and, and even costs. Coming to the right side, custom burger. Now a customer walks in, picks and chooses whatever toppings or sides that he or she prefers. So as the customer orders, someone is literally fixing the burger. So it's one customer at a time. There's no concept of some 20 customers picking up and walking away. You see the difference, right? So moral of this is how a batch production and right size of batch boosts your productivity and reduces costs. Now let's look at the flow and capacity. Again, don't get confused. I'm just using the terms as per my convenience, but capacity again can relate to your batch size. Imagine there is a bridge. At any given time, there cannot be more than 100 vehicles on the bridge. That means that is the maximum capacity of the bridge. But technically, you can fit in 200 cars at the same time on the bridge. But just because you can fit in 200 cars if you allow so many to continuously go, then what happens? It can be chaos, traffic mess, delays, accidents, and bridge can even collapse, right? So never maintain at full capacity. You won't have a smooth flow. Agree? Same thing in IT, when you overload a member, it can have many side effects. There's one gentleman, Don Reinertsen, who is the author of a book called The Principles of Product Development Flow. And he quotes in the book, operating a product development process near full utilization is an economic disaster. So what do you do? You try to control the flow. How do you control? One method is you introduce a system of issuing cards uh, to each car that enters the bridge on both sides. Let's call them the North toll gate and South toll gate. Let's say you maintain 100 cards at North. So on North, when cars enter, you issue a card. When they exit at South gate, they are supposed to return the card at that gate. So the South gate operator uses the same cards to issue to cars entering on the South side. And those cards are collected back at North gate when they exit. So by this, what you're trying to do is you're maintaining a steady flow. So it always stays within your limits of 100 cars. That's what we refer to as limiting the workflow. And you can also visualize the workflow with the number of cards that are in your bin. Just take it as an example, okay? So we are just using it to understand our concepts of Kanban. Excellent. Now let's study the queue system. Imagine there's a coffee shop and there are customers walking in to order coffee. Now, when more and more people come in, what happens? The queue becomes longer. If queue becomes longer, what does it translate to? It directly translates to delays in the whole process increases the wait time, quality of coffee could be compromised, there could be some spills here and there, wrong orders can be processed, and the person making it could be demotivated. So many things can happen. So what he's saying is in IT projects, you try to reduce the wait times 
So a professor by name John Little developed a formula to measure the average wait time, which is you take the average queue length and divide it by average processing time. Don't worry too much to understand the formula and how it applies uh, for now. But generally you just keep in mind longer queues are not good. It leads to longer wait times. It's funny little law deals with long queues. So it makes it easy to remember, right? So the next is making process policies explicit. So what he means is there could be policies uh, established, but unless you explicitly communicate, sometimes it's not of much use. Just to look at an example here, the traffic policies exist, but either they are not communicated properly or not understood. And that can lead to chaos and even accidents, right? That's what you see in the picture. Now, if the same policies are explicitly communicated and made to understand, then the flow gets smoother. That's what we do with the traffic cops or traffic lights, right? So that is what the right side picture is. Okay, the next is implementing feedback loops. So feedback loops are a vital part of Kanban. We use feedback loops to tell us if the things we do are effective or, or, uh, or is it making an impact. These feedback loops can be done through a set of meetings with different cadences. You focus mainly on how you're getting things done, how can you do it better, and how you're doing the right things. So there are seven different uh, meetings that Kanban uses uh, for feedback loops. As you can see, it's uh, highlighted with those circles in red. So we don't need to go into details right now because we are not covering Kanban in uh, full detail. But this is just to give you an idea as to how many places or how many instances that you can get feedback. Okay, nice. Typically in Kanban, there's no estimation. It is continuous or ongoing tasks, no time box iterations. There are daily meetings, but focus mainly on the impediments. So the focus is going to be just on delivery based on capacity rather than overloading the developers. If you imagine the number of issues or tickets or tasks that you need to complete, they'll be put into an indefinite pipeline, which, which in agile world, we normally call it uh, backlog. So there's a single indefinite backlog and developers pull the tickets from the backlog and process them. The backlog of items can always be prioritized or reprioritized. So if you see the board in each area, such as input analysis, development, etc., you are pulling only the limited number of tickets from the previous bucket and working on them. How many are you pulling? You are pulling only what you can handle based on your team capacity. If you see the number 6432 on the top, that shows your team capacity in each bucket. So accordingly, you will pull only those number of items from previous buckets. So it's a pull system. Clear, right? So basically you are pulling. It is very evident that Kanban is a good fit for maintenance or service type of projects because it all runs by issues or tickets. You drop the tickets in an indefinite backlog. You can prioritize and put them in some order. Then team pulls the number of tickets they can handle and every group pulls from the previous bucket and it goes on. So that is Kanban in IT. So before concluding, let's look at some of the benefits from using Kanban. Number one, simplicity. By far, this is the least invasive agile framework to my knowledge. Fairly simple, flexible, and easy to execute. You don't need a lot of transition or knowledge compared to some of the other frameworks. In fact, I used this uh, in one of the instances uh, some time back and results were amazing for what we were doing at the time. Shorter lead time. Cycle time is a key metric for Kanban teams. Cycle time is the amount of time it takes for a unit of work to travel through the team's workflow from the moment work starts to the moment it ships. By optimizing the cycle time, the team can confidently forecast the delivery of future work. And also overlapping skill sets also helps to uh, shorten the lead times. You, you're getting a cross-functional skill set. For instance, testing isn't done only by QA engineers, developers pitch in too. In a Kanban framework, it's the entire team's responsibility to ensure work is moving smoothly through the process. And then focus on priority items. A Kanban team is only focused on the work that's actively in progress. Once the team completes a work item, they plug the next work item off the top of the backlog. Visibility. The Kanban board is pretty straightforward. You know exactly which task is where and it provides a lot of visibility. Continuous delivery is the practice of releasing work to customers frequently. Kanban and CD beautifully complement each other because uh, both techniques focus on the just-in-time delivery of value. The faster a team can deliver innovation to market, the more competitive their product will be in the marketplace. And Kanban teams focus just precisely on that, optimizing the flow of delivery to customers. Then reduction of waste. You are focusing just on the essential items rather than working on some unwanted tasks to the point. So wastage is minimized. The Kanban method seeks to achieve balance between customer demands and business capabilities. This balance between these two is what determines how stable your IT organization is. 
many times when you lose this balance that is when you see overworked workforce uh, productivity going low or uh, quality going low uh, delivery is getting delayed and so on so kanban model helps to get that balance so with that we conclude uh, kanban uh, i hope you liked it i thought this will give a good overview of uh, the whole kanban system if you are interested further you can always uh, get some advanced training in kanban and with that we also conclude this go agile 6 we'll meet again soon in go agile 7 till then stay safe and see you